Welcome to Drone Law Pro Radio. Today we're going to be talking about the FAA's registration process for recreational and hobby drones. And so if you go to the FAA website, you're going to see there's a pretty good FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, which outlines a lot of the information on the questions that you're going to have about drone registration. Before you register your drone, you should go to the FAQ and read it thoroughly because it's going to give you the context that you're going to need to not only get through the registration process, but to understand drone registration from the FAA's point of view. Now, keep in mind, these questions and answers are, in fact, from the FAA. Not all drone attorneys agree with some of the things that the FAA is saying in terms of their jurisdiction, in terms of their authority to actually regulate recreational or hobby drones, uh, perhaps their definitions, etc. So this is all going to be from the FAA's point of view. They regulate the national airspace and from their point of view they get to regulate unmanned aircraft systems. So go to faa.gov slash uas slash registration in order to begin the registration process. This is the website that the FAA has said they're going to provide to us so that we can register our drones. So this is where we are. FAA.gov UAS registration. Once you get to this web page, if you scroll down and again read the information on the page carefully, but if you scroll down you're going to see that you have the ability to start the process of registering your drones. Okay, So understand that if you have a drone that you already owned, then you've got a little bit of a grace period to register. If you've got a new drone after that was purchased after December 21st, you've got to actually register your drone before its first operation. And you'll find all that information on the FAQ. So beginning December 21st, anyone who owns a small unmanned aerial system is going to have to start this registration process. The website is there for anyone that's 13 years old or older. Uh, If you are under 13, then the parent needs to register for the child. And this is for drones that are between 0.55 pounds and under 55 pounds. So go ahead and hit the register now and it's going to take you to this website. Welcome to the small unmanned aircraft system SUAS registration page. You're going to create an account by creating a username and password and again anyone over the age of 13 years or older needs to register. If you're under 13 the parent needs to register for you and it's a standard registration process. You're going to create a username or an email you're going to have a password. Password has to have certain characteristics in order to qualify. And then they're going to send you a confirmation email. So this is no different than many other websites out there. Once you get that verification email, you're going to be able to click that link or insert that link into the URL. And it's going to give you this page. You are accessing the SUAS registration site. There's some information on privacy and what they're going to be able to use with your data, although I have to say it's not very informative and doesn't tell you everything that they can use your data for. Once you click the uh, acknowledgement of that page, you're going to be able to log in again using that same username and password that you already created and enter into the system. Once you log into the system, you are going to start to see some boxes to to provide them with your name, your address, your email, your phone number, and an alternate email address. These are mandatory fields for registration, and this is the information that's going to go in the database. Now, if you get registered before January 21st, they'll actually take your credit card and then they will, uh, they will credit you the $5 they charged you. You're going to get a unique registration number and you must affix that to each of your recreational drones. Here's the deal. They want you to acknowledge and agree to the community standards for safe flight. These are their view of the regulations. You'll fly below 400 feet within visual line of sight, meaning you have to be able to see the drone at all times. 
you will have to be aware of the FAA airspace requirements. These are the temporary flight restrictions. So, for instance, if if there's a, a festival or fireworks or the president's coming to town or many other instances, there'll be a TFR that says you cannot fly. You can't fly directly over people. Very common problem. Do not fly over people. You cannot fly near emergency response efforts such as fires or police. And you will not fly after consuming alcohol. And there is no limit. You cannot consume alcohol and fly your drone. All right. So there's a, that next page is going to, well, the, and the information on that registration page will take you to some links, telling you some do's, telling you some don'ts, and they want you to read all of this information. This is their attempt to make you agree with the FAA regulations. These are the things that you can get in trouble for if you fly your recreational drone outside the regulations, for instance, over people, beyond line of sight. It is pretty clear the FAA will take the position that you are fl unlawfully flying if you do violate these conditions. Once you acknowledge and agree to their view of the rules, you're going to be able to provide some credit card information. And the credit card is there to, so they know you are a real person, that you can be traced back at least through your credit card. And you're again agreeing uh, that you could be fined or imprisoned if you violate the rules. So they're regulating you. Do not mistake. This is more than registration. This is you agreeing to their view of the regu regulations. Ultimately, you'll get your registration number. That registration number is what you will put on your aircraft in order to uh, register your drone or in order to complete the registration process of your drone. You can put it in your battery compartment or somewhere else that's visible. But it is mandatory that the registration number go on the aircraft so that they can trace this back to you through your credit card, through your email, through your address. You will actually get a UAS registration certificate. This is something that you have to have with you every time you fly. You can print it out. They're going to mail it to you. You can make it a PDF document in order to be able to have a digital version, which is okay. I save mine out as a PDF so that I can make sure that um, I've got it with me on my computer or on my cell phone when I'm out there flying. Someone in the field is going to come and ask you for their UAS re registration certificate. That can be the police or FAA field officer. Uh, it could be anyone in law enforcement and it could be a park ranger. So uh, you need to have the registration certificate. And again, they're going to ask you to remember the simple safety guidelines that you already reviewed. This is the whole point of registration. They want you to comply with the rules. All right, good luck out there and fly safe. This has been Drone Law Pro Radio teaching you how to register your recreational or hobby drone.